はい、では、えー、Now we'd like to begin the panel session number two. It's titled Creating Mainstream Brands. As you may be aware,、uh, those are the top executives、uh, from the top brands we have here today. I think for the brands, each、uh, company would have their own issues. From this side,、uh, Mr. Ikuo Maeda from Mazda. And in the center, we have from In the center, we have. I forgot I was in Japan. I forgot to wait for the applause. I'm sorry. In the center, we have Mr. Laron van der Acker from Renault. And then on the far right from the audience, we have Mr. Minami from Honda. I believe you are prepared with some presentations, so we'd like to go ahead with this.、Uh, if Mr. Maeda, you could start this off. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to. Thank Mr. Shiro Nakagawa from Nissan and all of the sponsors for this wonderful opportunity. It is such a rare opportunity to see all the executives from the top brands, and I was looking forward to this opportunity. I only have、uh, 10 minutes for my presentation, so I'll be brief. From the Design point of view, how we are trying to deepen the value of、uh, Mazda. This is the topic I'd like to talk about today. The theme of、uh, this session is creating mainstream brands. So, this is the topic that's been given to me. First of all, we are not a mainstream brand, neither do we want to be a mainstream brand. We term ourselves as being a small player. We are small, yet we shine. We're small, but we shine. That's the kind of brand we would like to become. Small, but conspicuous. And we would like to take on the challenges no one else dares to. We would like to be different from others, and we're really serious about it. For example, you know the rotary engines. Once Mazda quits it, then it would just vanish. It's a technology that's going to vanish if we do not do it. We are still continuing development of that engine. And then the Sky Active technology, Sky Active technology, this is another technological innovation that we have initiated. And we'd like to bring the best car in the world with. Something that comes out of the unconventional. And then the cars that we produce, it is a work of art. The one you see here is something that will be shown the first thing in the morning after the, pre in the press conference. It's going to be premiered for the first time. It's going to be the first one in the morning. So it may be a little bit difficult for you to reach there by that time, but please do come to check out this new、um, car. And a car should have a beautiful form crafted by human hands, and a car should be an animated work of art and a machine that inspires. And this is Mazda Design. The theme of the design is called the breathing soul of motion. It's soul of motion, breathing life into the car, breathing life into the car. That's the theme we have for designing the master cars.
for us, a car is like our own partner. It is something that has life. It's like your family or your boyfriend, your girlfriend, or your friends, somebody who is very dear to you. And of course, it does not have a life. It's just a metal box. However, I would like to give life into that. This may sound a little bit religious, but it's not meant to be that way. But it, to some extent, design has that kind of religious nature to it. And based on this thinking, we have a video that's been created based on the soul of motion idea. うつくしいものでなければ人の心を打つことはできない。情熱を込めて作られたものでなければ感動を呼ぶことはできない。人間の手が生み出す様々な形をまとって我々の車たちは単なる道具であることを超える。これがマツダデザイン。this is a um, commercial film for Mazda Design. What we're trying to say is about our aspirations for designing, not just the shape of the car. This is the reason why we have uh, created this kind of a video. Shapes, it's something shaped by human hands. And as you know well, it's very difficult to create a new car. It's getting more and more difficult. There is a lot of issues that we need to challenge. At the same time, we have to be efficient. Against this backdrop, it's going to be created by a human being. Through that, there will be warmth given to that. And that's where we are trying to create values, the human aspect of a design. Please take a look at this shape form it may look as if it's alive breathing life into something that also means manipulating lights to express the life this is the most delicate part of a designing a car the reflections would give a different impression about a car and how is this going to be connected to our actual design. We would create a model like this and think about the lights or the reflections. This has a very resolute kind of uh, taste to it. And this original model turns into this one, CSXD. And until we reach this stage, there were many trials and errors. But after going through all of the trials and errors, we would reach something that we have tried to achieve through the original model. We always go back to that starting point. This is another example. This is called N. It's a lustrous, glossy shine that we wanted to express. And this has evolved into this uh, latest Roadster form. It's dynamic, it's vibrant. This is what we wanted to express here. And this is the Roadstar model. And if you could look at the zebra below, the shape of the car itself is very simple. However, it has been modeled very delicately. There is this uh, light that has been controlled in this shape. And we want it to become the one and only in this domain. This kind of a concept thinking has also been converted into a bicycle. There was a luster. It's a sexy bicycle. And you may ask why do bicycles need to be sexy? But this is what we have done. And then there is a delicate sensitivity to create an exquisite beauty. This is a Japanese asset. This is where we have originated in. This is the aesthetic value that is unique to the Japanese, and we create forms based on this spirit. Finally, about the brand that we would like to create. First of all, it's something that faces the beauty like artists, and also to couple with that, we need the craftsman that is capable of creating that beauty. So it's like an atelier 
where people get together to create beauty. And it is a brand that is driven by the passion of those are craftsmen in that atelier. And by accumulating all of those passions, the message becomes more clear. This is the brand message that we're trying to convey. And uh, lastly, I'd like to share with you a video that demonstrates our spirits. So my name is Minami from Honda. Firstly, uh, Shiro Nakamala invited me. Uh, he actually emailed me, and I uh, said, of course, right away, but I wasn't expecting such a uh, splendid group of people at such a wonderful venue, so I'm getting uh, more and more nervous. But uh, with such a great uh, group of uh, members to be able to have this kind of discussion, I'm very much grateful for this opportunity. And I've been looking forward to this. Now, in this session two, whereas uh, panel session one talked about the mass, uh, luxury for the mass, opposite to that, the mainstream brand, like Honda is one of the mainstream brand, uh, is getting closer to the luxury, be it the quality and the equipment. Sometimes the higher quality cars uh, compared to the luxury may be sold by the mainstream brands. Now within our Honda design, to have a f uh, lineup of the faces, to have the lineup lined up by design, it's coming down from the premium to the mass level. Now the brand and face design, Honda's uh, face Recently, it's been uh, lined up, and including um, my intention of why did we come to where we are is what I like to explain. First of all, why that is happening, technology, and I have this myself too, and I'm sure everyone else has it too, but just is it a completely different design? No, actually it's almost the same. How about the uh, functions and the contents? I have it, but uh, I think my daughter is better at using this. But it, I choose it because of this. Uh, that's exactly what the brand is all about. So one brand, and of course, you can do more with this compared to other brands or lines and manufacturing process is wonderful from the expert's point of view. But basically, it's all about the brand. But recently, these industrial products 
or of course uh, expanding but the cars is a bit different and I think there is an important thing the car has a face this face where the there are lots of industrial products when it comes to uh, the car manufacturers we call it a face we don't we may call it a front of the a car but to say the face doesn't look good it has a funny face we use the term face which is quite unique among other industrial products to talk about the face so the faces that leave an impression on the left hand side of course is a group of so-called unique faces but it could be the uh, actors actresses on the right hand side is a uh, very well balanced faces and as Guizan uh, made a similar comment earlier, but what is beautiful may not necessarily impress people. That may not uh, leave an impression, but uh, it's uh, the uniqueness, it's uh, the mindset, it's really the proof, evidence of how that person has left would leave an impression. Uh, that's what we can call that a unique face. Original face in a nutshell, face expresses the person's way of life, uh, his uh, history, the way he has been living. So, in creating a face, that's exactly what uh, we want the Honda face to look like, reflecting the history and the mindset and the way of life. How about Honda's uh, way of life? Well, face expresses a company, Honda's way of life, where we have a founder. Uh, Mr. Honda and his history, the challenges, people focused, human focused, and uh, playful and out of the box thinking that try to do something that nobody has done, but uh, still respect people. Those have to be reflected into a product. Now, this is extreme case. This may uh, cause some misunderstanding, but when I was assigned as a director, I explained it to the president, CEO. Face in a nutshell belongs to the company. It's not a customer's. Even if a CEO wants to change the face, well, you may be able to adjust some uh, eyebrows, but you cannot face okay, change the face drastically. But when it comes to the body, it belongs to customers. There are trends, but the face of the car uh, should not be kept on changing. It's not good as a brand to keep on changing the face. That's what I said. Now, the solid uh, wing face, this is uh, Honda's uh, design keyword, sporty, intelligent, and progressive. Now, this progressive is to be half a step ahead. We want to uh, make something progressive that is uh, even half a step ahead of everyone. So, around the global models, uh, we've been lining up the face, especially in the middle, in the case of fit, it was just... Well, my wife uh, got upset that it doesn't look cute anymore. Anyways, uh, on a global base basis, this face is well accepted. Now, this uh, solid wing fence. And this is the first time I talk about this. But originally, the Honda motor mark. Now, this is still used uh, as a wing mark for the motorcycles. So, Mr. Soichiro Honda was inspired and wanted the, his company to really fly around the world, want to have uh, wings uh, within the mind. So that was originally the corporate mark brand. But to Honda's new face, uh, with this intention of a founder, we wanted to create a new face. But even with such face, there are customers' needs and trends. So mass brand in our case, although the corporate size may not be that big, but because of the, we have uh, compact to uh, trucks and uh, sports. So we have to be able to accommodate different uh, varieties. So not changing the face, but uh, wear a hat or the wear sunglasses, but you can still tell who that person is. The Honda's face or the mindset has to be made visible. And basics of sports are tough. Uh, the face can be exposed pressed in those different types. So that's how we are building up the current lineup of the different types of products. It's not for the purpose of having the uh, face lined up, but those are three 
spirits of Honda uh, should be reflected into our future design. Now this is the latest 10th generation Civic in US. Uh, this face uh, is very much well perceived. We were able to do something very dynamic. So among different uh, manufacturers, uh, well, maybe I should have uh, advertised about tomorrow, but this is hydrogen uh, FCX mass production would debut. So with uh, Mr. Soichiro's uh, foundation spirit uh, on the wing, uh, being unique yet have a good face. If you can get that feeling, then our designers' uh, mindset uh, can be considered as a success. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I've been listening to the three presentations. And among the mainstream brands, it seems that uh, there are a variety of ways of thinking about the mainstream brands. They are all thinking about who I am. I was very much impressed, impressed about it. And uh, when you're designing a car, it's a very mature product, so people say that it's very mature. And when you need to design a new car, how much value can you create in a new car? That's the first question. How much value can be created by designing a car? The design itself may be the value that is added. That's what people have said for a long, long time. But I no longer believe that design itself brings value. The design itself is the brand value, or the brand is the design. It's almost equivalent. The brand and the design is almost equivalent. We have to have it that way. We have a lot of issues. It's very difficult to create a beautiful form. And if it's simply a value added, then we cannot work so hard. It's just a simple value that is added that will not motivate us so much. So the design itself has to be the brand itself. So it's so uh, you're saying that the design itself is the brand. Now, uh, uh, Lawrence, for a car, the design, how does it add value, the brand? The important is that the design is creates the first uh, attraction. You know, it's when you need, when you meet a new person, when you meet a beautiful person. If you're not attracted. Uh, to him or her, the chances are very small that you're going to talk. So in order to create a relationship, you need to have that first attraction. And I think for that, design is absolutely key because it's a very visual thing, as I showed in my presentation. Now, I think after that, there needs to be substance behind the attraction. There needs to be, uh, it needs to be more than skin deep. There needs to be uh, it cannot be a one night stand. It needs to, for it to become a marriage, there needs to be substance. Uh, and in this way, design needs to help both these stages, you know, first attraction first, and then make sure that, uh, that it expresses substance. So design, I think, is key. I agree, I agree with Midasan that design is becoming the expression of the brand, the first expression of the brand. But the first, uh, first time the, your customer feels that uh, this is just a Renault design, but you have to keep the, that kind of the passion to do the during the ownership long time. So how do you manage? Yeah, I think, I think, yeah. uh, I think the, the beauty comes from, from the exterior. For me, like I said, the interior is where, uh, where you need to, how can I say, create the long-term relationship. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. you're attracted by the exterior and then when you live with the car mm -hmm. and you deal with the car, that's when you created the, the strongest relations. So uh, I know we have a lot of work to do in the interiors, and I think uh, if we can create a, an interior experience that is lasting, then I think we really create a, a strong relationship. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, I can understand that idea. So there are no Honda no minus. Now over to uh, Mr. Minami from Honda, please. 
uh, people tend to get this wrong. When we say design, it's uh, architecture, architecting, designing, it's different from styling. Essentially, design is about assembling, putting things together. So, how the company can concretize its idea. It's like a clothes. How you want to be viewed? You, do you want to be viewed as being a stylish person? Do you want to be viewed as a fashionable person? For that purpose, you would choose what you wear. Do you want to look very eccentric, like a rocker? Then you would wear a leather jacket. So what does the company want to do? And to achieve that, what kind of a clothes would you wear? That's the total coordination. That's what is needed in the design today. A company with a bad design, I don't think does not exist anymore. It's how we cater to the different preferences, inclusive of the services that can be provided to those um, users. Recently, there is a friend of mine who is about 32 or 33 years old. He had gone to this party to meet a girlfriend. Some groups get together to meet a girlfriend. And there was a guy who was about um, 30 years old. And he said that the girls were lovely. They had nice manicures and they were wearing nice clothes. It's just like the cars. And uh, they say that they were just so simply cute. But they have to be impressive, I think. It's the same with the cars. If you want to buy that car, I think the impression has to be stronger. It should not be just a simple cute. That's what I thought, having listened to his uh, remark. And uh, today, when I was invited to this forum, I said yes without uh, thinking seriously about it. But I found out that I was the only female moderator among all of the panel discussions. That's the reason why I chose this dress today. And today, looking at the drivers, half of them are females, women in the developed countries and the Japanese license holders. Half of them are female. But looking around at me, myself, there are a lot of uh, men, it's men oriented. However, how would you uh, create a design that would be more women oriented? First of all, Mr. Uh, Lorenz. Well, I just have to, ha I happen to have one good example. Mm -hmm. uh, when we developed Capture, the, the orange crossover, mm -hmm. half the team was female. And so this was quite unique in, uh, in our history. And it's actually, I think, the reason why the car uh, is, uh, is very colorful, why the car is very stylish, mm -hmm. why the car is also quite practical and pragmatic at the same time on the interior. Um, there's a funny story. The, the car has a, uh, seat covers that you can take off um, so you can easily clean them. Uh, and you can wash them at 35 degrees. Just, uh, just so you know. And when they tested the cars, um, they had to make sure that the zippers wouldn't uh, damage the clothing of the women when they get out of the car. So we put the zippers on the side and lower in order to protect uh, the, the, the particular clothing of the car when people uh, got in and out of the car. And I think this car has been ex extremely successful, uh, among other things, with women, I think. Because I think they sense that there is a, an intelligence in, into, uh, into the interior, on, among other things. Oh, wait. I didn't know it. I'm so sorry. No, I, I forgive you. <laughs> so Maeda-san, who has been nodding uh, for a long time, I haven't attended uh, this party where young uh, men and women uh, meet. but. Uh, uh, so uh, this is a male-oriented uh, society, and I like a mannish car, but uh, probably a uh, target is more women than uh, men. 
but uh, I don't uh, keep that in my mind when I design. But uh, women nowadays are n different from uh, women uh, in all the days. They are stronger, but they are still beautiful, and uh, they pay much attention to materials, uh, colors. They are much. Uh, they have uh, much greater sensitivity to uh, those things: uh, beauty, uh, color, material, so on and so forth. So I don't uh, plan on uh, driving. Uh, the design uh, towards the feminine direction, but I would like to create uh, a sexy car. So women uh, in that sense are quite important. Rather than directly targeting uh, the women, but the sensitivity of uh, women and uh, um, uh, women's uh, perspectives, uh, those things uh, you keep in your mind, am I right? Yes. So design that would appeal uh, to uh, women, um, uh, that is the fundamental thing, I think. So uh, women nowadays uh, talk about uh, sporty cars, looking at the Mazda. Uh, commercial and uh, some uh, female journalists uh, do come to me and ask about the sporty cars. That is, that was the purpose. That was the goal. Uh, Minami San. So uh, the, uh, you've been talking about uh, toughness, and I think women are looking for toughness in cars as well. So uh, women. Well, I must be careful that uh, I don't say anything that is politically uh, incorrect or sexual harassment of type of th things. But uh, depending on the country, uh, uh, people uh, think about uh, women differently. For example, uh, in Japan, the sometimes uh, pink cars is well uh, received. But in the US, it's almost impossible. The women in the US, how a car looks. Uh, for example, uh, some women in the U.S. Uh, would say that uh, because there is no exhaust uh, in the rear part, it's not sexy. So Japanese uh, values and overseas uh, values, particularly the values held by uh, overseas women, is different. And uh, in emerging nations like uh, India and so forth, uh, people have uh, different uh, values. And how we can capture their needs <coughs> and taste. Uh, in order to come up with a good uh, mass uh, brand uh, that is a source of headache now. And today, too, I hope that, uh, for example, an event like this, uh, a half of the audience uh, should become a female. So that is your uh, personal wishes. Um, uh, frankly, the women, I mean, uh, men tend to think all women are the same. Uh, for example, male uh, would uh, have a job and uh, uh, work uh, when they grow up, but the uh, women have uh, so many choices that they can be a wife, daughter, or mother. And uh, uh, there is uh, uh, very um, uh, diversified uh, values are held by women. And that is uh, one of the elements for design, required uh, elements uh, in design. So uh, probably uh, you should look at designing from uh, um, uh, many more perspectives. Uh, that is how I felt. Maybe we should uh, open up the floor uh, for questions uh, from the audience. Uh, if you have a question, I'm sure you have many questions because um, uh, these brands are quite uh, 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 close to us. And uh, please raise your hand if you have a question. Is someone who raised the hand immediately? The man in the middle, please. On the left hand side. Thank you for informative uh, discussion. To create brand value with the design was discussed. So, design creating a brand value. What is the most difficult point in creating value with design in a nutshell, if you may tell us? Um, this is Akimura from Kawasaki. To create a brand, uh, what is the most difficult? What is the struggle? I'm sure you have different uh, issues uh, from different brands. So in order, how about you, Maida-san? We only have struggles. That's all I can say. But um, to strengthen the expression and to put them all together and the product disseminating the brand values, if we as designers work hard, of course, uh, we can do a lot, 
But uh, something other than that, for instance, the infrastructure environment around cars or people, when it comes to brown, it is construct it is structured by different elements. So all the people related to Mazda should be looking towards the same direction uh, to uh, the every single end. That would take time. Uh, that's the biggest uh, challenge, the, the biggest struggle. So this is a struggle as you are still in the midst of the process because I tend to rush. So I want to come up with a product as soon as possible, but it's not that easy. So we have to do one step at a time, step by step at a time. So it requires a lot of patience. I see. How about you, Lawrence? -san? Now, what is your view? If 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 you look at the words creating value, essentially what you want to do is uh, that the customer pays more for the product than what it costs. Mm -hmm. That, in my view, is creating value. And uh, so you need to find out what the customer is prepared to pay for something. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the one of the biggest aces we have as designers is to create beauty, mm -hmm. because there is no price on beauty. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a good start. If you're designing a car, but if you're designing any product, is if it's beautiful, automatically you you will are willing to to sacrifice to. Uh, to, to, to obtain this. But then I think there needs to also be substance. And unfortunately, in a car, there are many things that we put in there that people are not willing to pay for. Um, for instance, if you put in a car uh, eight airbags instead of six, or if you put into a car uh, uh, the new safety systems, which will give you the same five stars as you already have, if you put into cars uh, more sophisticated suspensions that you can't see, those are things that need to go in the vehicles, but we cannot make our customers uh, value this. So design has to make up for some of these investments, as well as uh, create a surplus of value. And I think, uh, like I said before, it starts, in my view, it starts with beauty and then followed by substance. Okay. Oh, great. Yes. I see. How about you, Minami-san? So I think uh, Fukuyi-san mentioned about this in the uh, first session, what the top management thinks. I think it's very close to what the senior top management thinks. So uh, the top management of the European brands who are here with us love cars, have a good understanding about cars, but uh, when it comes to Chinese cars, of course, we're Japanese makers. The top management whether they see design as their management resources, how to leverage the design as uh, management resources. Maybe the Japanese manufacturers are a little bit behind in that. So in my company's case, uh, the CEO changed so to create it from scratch, and the company has to change at the company level no matter how we scream about design is design, design cannot change everything else. So we have to have a good communication with the top management and work on how to, and as Maida-san said, to the, every end, to the very single end of the cell uh, so that everyone in the company can look towards the same direction so that uh, we can have the blood of the brand into every single corner but that's very difficult. Based on what I've been hearing, in fact, in designing a car inside the company and not just inside the car, including the supply and B2C customers and being in the middle to every single corner, your brand and the promise of the product, the promise with the people who make and promise of the uh, company, design uh, is sort of struggling, uh, stuck in the middle. That's the impression I got. So the balance here is very difficult, I believe. It's very interesting. Maybe we can take some more questions, if you have any questions. There is somebody on the right-hand side, please. I'm sorry, I don't see your face. If you could tell me your affiliation and your name. 
Thank you very much for the interesting um, presentation. I, I came to meet the heroes from Kyoto. I do not work for a particular company. I have not had any formal education in design. On the other hand, I love cars. That's the common uh, thread that runs through you and me. And we're now talking about the brand in the same panel discussion. In the design industry and in the auto industry, and also this is applicable to other industries, not just to design and auto mobiles. It's also applicable to that nation or to each individual. If I can cite one example, I used to go to a university, but the university had taken on this brand strategy. And it used to be a Buddhist related university, but it has wanted to become more international. But to me, that uh, looked very much in vain. I think uh, there are a lot of uh, industries that's searching for identity or that's trying to create a brand. And to be very honest, within the auto industry as well, the brand strategies taken by the auto industry also looks like a vanity. I'm sorry, I may sound very arrogant. And identity is somebody, something that everybody is uh, searching for. But on what basis is it created? For example, there are different diverse value sets. And we need to cater and to, we need to accommodate different uh, values. But the more you try to do it, the core of the brand or the integrity of the brand may be tarnished may be disrupted, uh, there is a contradiction. In my belief, Midas I had said that design to some extent has religious nature to that. Some people say Japan is a religious country. In the past, we used to believe in the air or the ambience. When you see the eye of another person, you can communicate. That's in Japan. And uh, if that does not exist, and if you cannot trust a company, then what should we believe in? What should we rely on in order to create a brand or to create the identity? I am sorry, we are running out of time. If I may just summarize your question. Sometimes when I am asked where I belong to, I am a freelance journalist, so it's difficult to respond to that question. So please don't worry. So the question was about brand and identity. There's identity and the diverse values. Maybe it's difficult to take the strike a balance between those two. If you try to um, accommodate different uh, value sets, it's difficult to maintain your brand. I think that was the gist of the question. When you want to create a very strong brand, at the same time, you want to accommodate the variety and diversity, all of these different value sets. How can you balance those two contradicting elements? That's a very tough question. There is a diverse value set, values, and we need to accommodate that. It's something people say very often in our case. From my point of view, there is, it's not diverse. Whatever is good is good to everybody. I think there is one basic string. But if you look into the details, it may be diverse, but there's always one core value that is common. So as a professional, there should be something that we can never compromise, the core value. And we, also, we all have to believe in something and we have to pursue that. I think that's the right way to go. That's the basis, that's the foundation of our business. Thank you very much for the very clear cut answer. Rooted in your history, you need to be authentic. Mm -hmm. I think you cannot uh, push the company in a direction that uh, is in conflict with what it stands for. At the same time, the values need to be flexible enough because the world changes. So I think you need to have one foot in the past, one foot in the future. You need to make sure that you 
keep uh, sounding out where the world moves to. Because if you hold all your traditional values and you don't change, you become obsolete. So I think it's, it's that there's a natural tension between uh, the past and the future, but I think you, your roots need to stay very authentic. Also, I think it's very important to the, not only car design, so yeah. No, this, I think this goes beyond car design, I would say. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. Minami-san, like, I'm a little bit thinking about how do you think about it. So, Minami-san, you've been thinking hard. Uh, that's a difficult uh, question, and that is the question we oftentimes ask ourselves. But uh, by the end of the day, as we discussed about brand, what is important is what you want to do with it. Uh, looking at the customers and thinking about customers you know if you only do that um, you may not be able to come up with a good product so you yourself what you yourself want what kind of a car you yourself want if you don't find it uh, on street um, you can create it so a dream can drive a board things like that and it can create a new time so diversity um, but uh, how you want to be would be the value at the core and dream um, is the uh, a driving force so uh, each panelist uh, sincerely answered this difficult uh, question, and I think we have been able to very deeply dig into this difficult uh, theme, uh, which makes this session worthwhile conducting. So creating a mainstream uh, brand um, is uh, a theme for this, and please give them very nice rounds of applause.